Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to take a look at single phase semiconverter. Let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a single phase semiconverter with R load, which is called as symmetrical configuration. We also have something called as asymmetrical configuration. Before going into the configuration related details, what is a semiconverter? Semiconverters are devices where AC to DC conversion is obtained, but the output voltage will always remain in the positive direction, as in the V out will always remain positive. Compared to a fully controlled rectifier circuit, we are replacing two SCRs with uncontrolled diodes T1 and D2. That's the major difference in terms of circuit, and the output voltage will always remain positive. So you might be asking a question, why not use a fully controlled rectifier because there we were getting both positive and negative. Depending upon the circuit, we can use only positive output voltage waveform we can get, isn't it? So the reason is SCRs are more expensive compared to that of a diode. So having four SCRs to get only positive output voltage makes no sense. So we can replace two SCRs with a diode and still be able to get the positive output voltage that is required at the low terminals. And hence, we use semiconverters popularly in applications that demand only one quadrant operation. I hope this point is clear. So now what is symmetrical and asymmetrical configuration? Symmetrical configuration will have one SCR in each leg. So this is called as one leg. So one leg has only one SCR. Whereas in case of asymmetrical configuration, both the SCRs will be on the same leg. Now the major advantage of having one SCR in one leg in this particular fashion is that if you carefully observe the cathode of both these switches are connected to the same point over here. So when you're applying gate pulse with respect to cathode, both T1 and T2 can be triggered with a single gate circuit. Whereas if you carefully observe the cathode of T1 and cathode of T2 are not connected to the same point, so you need two separate gate circuits. As a result, in industrial applications, we always prefer symmetrical configuration over asymmetrical configuration. So our entire analysis going forward will be focusing towards symmetrical configuration. Now let's take a look at the operation as what happens during positive half cycle of the operation. So during positive half cycle, what happens? The supply voltage will be positive and negative in this case. So anode of T1 is connected to positive and cathode of diode D1 is connected to the negative. As a result, T1 and D1 will be forward biased and T2 and D2 will be reverse biased. And the current starts flowing through this path. And if you consider this as A and this as B, that is with respect to AB, the current will be flowing through this path. It will flow through this path and return to the source in this case. So what is V out? V out will just be equal to Vs because whatever you're supplying will appear at the low terminals, isn't it? These are just switches. And I out will be equal to V out by R. So the output voltage is positive because you're supplying positive voltage and with respect to terminal A and B, the current flow is in the same direction and you'll be getting V out is equal to Vs. Now what happens during negative half cycle? During negative half cycle, the supply voltage will be minus and plus. And if you carefully observe in this case, plus is connected to the anode of T2 and minus is connected to the cathode of D2. As a result, T2 and D2 are forward biased and T1 and D1 are reverse biased and the current flow will be through this path. It flows, if you consider this as A and B, the current will be flowing in the same direction as it was flowing previously and returns to the source through diode D2 and comes back to the source terminal. Again, what is the output voltage? The output voltage is still positive because the current flow is also in the same direction. So you'll be getting V out is equal to Vs. Basically, if you carefully observe, plus is appearing at this point. Plus is here, it's directly appearing at this point. And minus is here and it is directly appearing at this point. So that's why V out will be positive of Vs and I out will be equal to V out by R. So this is very, very important for analyzing the waveforms. We need to know during positive half cycle what is V out and during negative half cycle what is V out. If we know this, understanding the waveform is very, very simple. Now let's take a look at the waveforms. So we have considered the circuit operation just for our reference. So waveform can be divided into four sections. The supply voltage, Vs, the gate pulse, the output voltage V out and the output current I out. 
Now the source voltage we know it's sinusoidal in nature. So let us consider sinusoidal signal with some cycles over here. And let us say we are applying a gate pulse at alpha. So let us consider alpha as the firing angle. At say an instant of alpha, we are giving a firing pulse. Again, this will be equal to pi plus alpha. Again, this will be equal to 2 pi plus alpha because we are just applying after one complete period. That is, if this is 2 pi and this is pi, so based on that, we are able to write where we are going to trigger these signals. Now, what is the output voltage waveform during positive half cycle? We had seen that V out was equal to Vs, isn't it? So, when V out was equal to Vs, we know that unless and until we provide a gate pulse, the thyristor T1 will not conduct. So the output voltage will initially be equal to zero. And once T1 is forward bias, that is gate pulse is given to it, it will follow the supply voltage, that is Vs, because it is positive, isn't it? So you will be getting exactly the nature of Vs. So it will be following from this point and it goes to this point. So that is because of T1 and D1 over here, you're getting the output voltage. Now what happens during negative half cycle? The output voltage will immediately go to zero because D1 will be reversed biased and access open circuit. So there will be no path for the flow of current. As a result, the output voltage will be equal to zero. Now at pi plus alpha, again, you're going to trigger the next cycle. That is T2 you're going to trigger. So when you're triggering T2, it will become forward biased and access short. As a result, what will happen? Again, here in this case, we saw that V out will be equal to positive Vs, isn't it, during negative half cycle. So you will again get the supply voltage following the source voltage in the forward direction because V out is equal to plus Vs. So this is the waveform that you will be getting. Now again, after instance say 2 pi, diode D2 will be reversed biased because the next cycle is coming, that is positive voltage will be appearing across the cathode of diode D2 as a result, it will be reversed biased. So because of this, what happens, the output voltage again goes to zero and again the cycle repeats in this particular fashion for multiple cycles. I hope this point is clear. Now what is the current waveform? The current waveform will exactly follow the output voltage waveform. The reason is because depending upon the value of R, so if you say R is equal to one, then V out will be equal to I out. So the exact waveform will be the same. But if R is equal to some value, so I out is equal to V out by R, we know that, right? So based on that, the magnitude of the signal will change, but it will exactly follow whatever the output voltage shape is. So the amplitude of the signal of I out will change with respect to V out depending upon the value of R. So this is the waveform for a single phase semi-converter with R load. Now let's look into the analysis part where we will derive the expression for average and RMS output voltage. So for average output voltage, we know the fundamental definition V out average is equal to for one half cycle, if you consider that is one by pi alpha to pi alpha is the point where we are giving the firing pulse. So Vm sine omega t d omega t. This we have seen previously as well. So substituting and simplifying this, you will be getting, taking Vm outside, you'll be getting integration of sine is minus cos and alpha to pi is the upper and lower limits. V out is equal to, you will be getting Vm by pi into one plus cos alpha. Now, what is the RMS output voltage expression? RMS output voltage, again, we have derived this in the previous cases as well. It's quite similar to that. So we have one by pi alpha to pi. Fundamentally from the definition, we can write it as Vm square sine square omega t into d omega t. V out RMS is equal to substituting and simplifying this. We have done this in numerous cases, so I'm not going to derive it again root 2 pi pi minus alpha plus sine to alpha by 2. This term is completely under the square root. So this is the RMS output voltage expression. So these are all extremely important for solving numericals as they will give you the data and you have to solve the
problems related to this. I hope the analysis of a single phase semi-converter is clear to you. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.